education. So if you go and get a master's in some education field, which is not very stin strenuous, you're going to get a big bump. And a master's bump mm -hmm. is something I think, nope. didn't you mention that in your paper? Yeah, the idea of a master's bump, which is as soon as the teacher gets another degree and has more years in as a teacher, that's what gets them more money. So but your incentive... It's not, it's not showing results. Right, your incentive is results. to stay in as long as you can and take as many night classes as you can. That, that Does that relate to class productivity? Uh, it, it does. You have to get kind of down in the weeds here because something I said, you might say, well, gee, wait a minute. This paper says that we're spending more than anyone in education, but he just said that some places pay their teachers better. You have to look at the whole package. We had a, uh, let's say a district come before us once and they were opposed by their own union and what they asked to do is we'd like to pay people according to, pr to productivity. We're going to yes. ask them to do more but you see you have to get to that class size. If you deal with a class of 40 uh, you're worth more than someone making the same salary as you or more who only teaches 20. This is how other nations do. In any business, you have to make a connection between the number of employees and productivity. Productivity, you know how, it, how it's measured. And probably the most uh, stunning statistic on that, Paul Samuelson of the Washington Post came out with this. Between 1970 and 2008, at a time when pupil population only increased by 8%, the number of teachers increased by 61%. How did that happen? Because we cut class size exactly in half between... I've been, I've been hearing this for decades, mm -hmm. that really what we need to do in this school district or in this state is we've got to get the number of kids in a classroom down so that we can have some more one-on-one -on -one time with, with students. Has, has that, that's, People, been, that's been something that we've heard over and over, haven't we? Haven't we? Yes, yeah. It doesn't I mean, make a difference? Does, well, studies show that it, it does with some groups of kids, but not all kids, and it certainly makes it easier on the teacher. Now, I, I, remember, the, I remember the good old days in, in the Catholic school that I was sentenced to. Now, uh, keep in mind that the nuns there actually carried sidearms, and, and there was a, a box they would put you in if you, if you were bad called the hole. So it, it was, you know, and there were gun turrets outside and barbed wire, but they had a classroom of you know, 40 kids, and it was one little four foot tall nun. She was able to do that. Are you, are you saying that class size doesn't matter? You probably spent a lot of time in that box. It doesn't, and, and it's interesting. You, you see little straws in the wind now. Jefferson County is beginning to train yeah. teachers how to deal with, uh, with larger uh, class size. Aurora now has said that their secondary teachers are gonna have to teach six in the high school and middle school instead of five. Uh, which is routine anywhere else, um, and yet, and I remember when I came six to... Six students? No, six classes. Six classes. Um, and unless you see what student load is, this is why higher education costs are off the chart, because of student load. If you don't have any students, then it's a waste to pay you if you're not doing any, well, you're doing research or something like that. So only now, under the catastrophic fiscal conditions that people are looking at these things. We've known this for years, for decades. It's not been a secret, but we didn't have to pay attention to it, me, but now we do. Let me ask the, the question, what does it cost to educate a kid? Give, give me just some basic numbers. Let's, you know, from, from take the state of Colorado where, you, where you've got the most information. Now, I've heard that per pupil cost is about eight thousand dollars. Plus, when you take a look at the ten thousand, ten thousand. Mm -hmm. All right, and, and then there's there's capital costs. Talk to me about what it costs nationwide. Who, you know, is is there a state that does it well? Is there a state that does it poorly? Let, let me give you yeah. uh, an example of this, and one we highlight is uh, Utah. Utah's per pupil cost is sixty one percent of Colorado's and they do a better job as the national assessment testing. They knock our socks off in terms of They're well-behaved little Mormons. We, we, we need to beat our kids. Because class size in Utah is more like advanced nations, industrial nations, it's 23.7. In Colorado, it's 16.8. Do you know what the difference between 16.8 and 23.7 would be in Colorado? $300 million. Now you stop and think about it, how many problems you could solve. What's the worst? state? What's the most expensive state? 
is I've heard DC, the District of Columbia, has the most expensive per pupil cost. Does that sound which, about right? Which is true. Connecticut is highest among states, and it's a direct function between their collective bargaining agreement. They have binding arbitration. Any state that falls into the pit of binding arbitration will quickly see teacher compensation rising. Which I'd like to bring up the point about teacher evaluation systems. That is something that our country certainly needs to take a good look at. It is, besides the whole issue of tenure and it makes it difficult to get a teacher out of the classroom, we're just not evaluating our teachers the way that, that how, we how should. Hard is it, how hard is it to fire a bad teacher? I know there's lots of great teachers. I've met lots of great teachers. And because we have this collective bargaining system, we can't reward them with more money because they're doing a great job. But on the other side, we forget there's got to be statistically, if we have a certain number of great teachers, we're going to have some bad teachers. Everyone who works knows the guy at the office who really should be fired, which is usually me. But how hard is it to fire a teacher, a government teacher? Well, it takes, depending on the state and their, their laws, but it takes lots of documentation, lots of work. It can take $100,000 to for a in district to actually, in legal fees, to, to dismiss a teacher. And sometimes they're counseled out. But I think the real issue is the evaluation process. How best to, how best to evaluate a teacher? Because I know teachers don't like standardized tests. In Colorado, there's something called a CSAP. And that CSAP, you take it once a year and in certain classes. And we, we kind of do it. When I was a kid, I remember the Iowa skills basic test. How do you judge how well a teacher's doing? Well, there's a lot of discussion about how you do that. Uh, and I, I can't propose a particular plan, but I think it goes back to what are their academic abilities? I, do they know how to write? How can they teach a child to write if they don't know how to write? I mean, we have people coming into the system that aren't well educated, and so how are they going to educate children? Let me put in a good word uh, for teachers. They are not the ones who are principally at fault. They did not build this system. Uh, when I would talk to teachers, the things they would talk on and over and over about, the collapse of the student uh, work ethic, the failure to receive backup from their own administrations. Uh, and the key, the key to this is, Albert Shanker famously said, none of this reform stuff is going anywhere unless we repair the student work ethic. But how can you do that when you have grade inflation, social promotion, diploma by attendance, and open admission? in all of our colleges and universities. Where's the incentive for that student work ethic? We don't have that. All right, let, let me ask a simple question. Mm -hmm. Is education in the United States well-funded or poorly funded? Now, uh, every time I hear it talked about, we are just dying for money. There's never enough money in education. Give me, give me the, both of you, give me the quick answer. Let's start, start with Bill. The, the, the amazing thing is that this fact has been concealed. Uh, the best estimates now, and you have to have comparable countries, and there are complexities to this, but uh, show us with the third highest among the top 14 industrial nations uh, at about 11,000 uh, per, per people. So there's no question that we're spending enough. We're just spending it on the wrong things. The people are, we, are we spending too much or are we spending enough? I think when you look at the facts, we're, we're we're spending a lot, and it's just mm -hmm. continually gone up, and we're not getting we're not getting the results. So I think we're spending the money the wrong way, um, and increasing. And I'm I'm a former teacher. I'm all for teachers being paid well, but but all this talk about paying teachers a hundred thousand dollars and mm -hmm. uh, how can our system sustain that? Talk to me a little bit about choice because. We've tried to incubate certain areas of choice. Now, there, there's been great experiments in vouchers, I think in Milwaukee and Cleveland and even in D.C. where children have been saved. But there's also choices inside government education that there really haven't been before. What, what, are, we, what are we looking for? What works? Well, in Colorado, we have open enrollment for um, intra and inter. You can go across district lines or within your own district and choose any school you that you want, as long as there's space available, it meets the need of the child, and you can provide transportation. So there in other are, words, there's some competition between there, school there, districts. You yes, can go between, between that's different right. ones. And, and of course, then there's charter schools, 
in Colorado. Uh, it's not an open playing field. It's, it's still difficult because districts seem to still control that. But when you look um, around the country, some really exciting things that are going on. I mean, there's 26 voucher or tax credit programs, tax credits for people 